In addition to going to the Golden Temple in Amritsa, the other thing on my must-see list was the location of the Jallianwala Bagh Massacre, otherwise known as the Amritsa Massacre. The location is now a revered place for Indians. It is an enclosed space about 200 metres square, surrounded by buildings and walls at least 3 metres high, with narrow entrances. In 1919, there were five of these entryways, with the majority of them permanently locked. Following the end of the First World War, it was felt by Indians there should be an easing of the restrictions that the British government had put in place during the war to combat subversive activities and move towards local self-government. Instead, the restrictions were extended with the passing of the Rowlett Acts in early 1919. There was widespread anger and discontent by Indians, notably in the Punjab. April 1919, Amaritsa was a place of extreme tension for all. There had been a number of violent incidents on April the 10th in reaction to the imprisoning of Indian activists. There had been a mob attack on an English lady. Brigadier General Reginald Dyer was placed in charge of restoring order. He ordered that Indian men should crawl on their stomachs along the road where the lady had been attacked. There was also an order banning gatherings. When Dyer was informed that people were meeting at Jallianwala Bagh, he marched there with troops of the British Indian Army. He took with him an armoured car with a machine gun. Thankfully, the alley leading to the meeting ground was too narrow for the vehicle to pass through. I went to the site of the massacre with some trepidation. I must admit I felt like a German must feel visiting Auschwitz. The Indian people we encountered there were their usual friendly selves. There was only one harsh look from somebody, which could be expected. After entering through the alleyway Dyer had marched, I went to see an audio-visual presentation about these events. <laughs> The Congress leaders have decided to hold a meeting at Jallianwala Bar, demanding the release of Dr. Satyapan and Dr. Kitchen and the withdrawal of Black Act. As the day proceeded, a small child with a tin drum announced through the city that there would be a public meeting at 4.30 p.m. at Jallianwala Bar. responded and came in large numbers. They weren't aware that the colonials had declared martial law in Amritsa, banning public meetings and Prabhat periods. At about 12.30 p.m., General Dyer came to know of the proposed meeting and he decided to act. Thousands of Indians were listening to their leader Hansraj when an airplane hovering over the bath created restlessness amongst them. Hansraj assured them that since it was a peaceful, non-violent gathering, there was nothing to fear. However, a while later, sounds of soldiers marching and armored vehicles created a fear. General Dyer had arrived. He couldn't wheel in the armored vehicles due to the narrow entry. He ordered his 90 soldiers to take position. No warning, no announcement to leave the bar or to stop the meeting. The only order he gave was, within 10 minutes, 1,650 bullets ripped apart the massive gallery. It was death dancing everywhere. 
This building houses the well in which hundreds of people jumped into and were drowned or injured in attempting to escape the blitz. places along the boundary walls and buildings are these white framed markers showing the holes made by the bullets of the British Indian Army. Here stands the Martyrs Memorial, made of red stone. The British wanted to erase all trace of the massacre, but a trust was founded in 1920 
to build a memorial at the site after a resolution was passed by the Indian National Congress. In 1923, the Trust purchased the land through subscription, but it couldn't become a formal national memorial until after India gained independence in 1947. <laughs> England. 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 Yeah. Yes, yes. No. 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 <laughs> Nothing. Uh, Hindi. Only few, few words. Few words. Pick me. Pick me. Uh, yes. What does that pick, mean? Pick, pick, pick me. Oh yes. yes Picture. Picture. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 Following the massacre, Dyer was initially congratulated, but opinion soon changed and he was ordered to give up his position in the British Indian Army. The consensus of thought nowadays is that the massacre was a key moment in the non-violent struggle for Indian independence from British rule. When the killings took place in 1919, this ground was merely a wasteland, occasionally used for dumping rubbish. In 2021, Prime Minister Modi inaugurated a renovated Jallianwala bag to a mixed reaction from politicians and historians. The feeling was the site in being landscaped and with the revamped entrance as well as the light and sound shows was really doing nothing but watering down the sacredness of the site and sugarcoating the sacrifice of the martyrs. I was glad that I went to see this site it was uncomfortable, certainly for me as a British national. There's no doubt that it was a shameful episode in the history of British colonial rule in India. As I leave here, I can't help but wonder how many more of these types of memorials highlighting man's inhumanity to man must there be before the human race changes its core behaviour of wanting to impose will by force on others.